Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'll do today, I will explain uh, the prompt journey, right? In the last episode, I did discuss about Einstein trust layer and I explained a, an overview, right? How the trust layer works and different components associated with the trust layer. Um, so in this journey, sorry, in this episode, I'll talk about the prompt journey. Uh, I hope you might have seen uh, uh, my prompt builder uh, tutorial um, as a part of a co-pilot tutorial I've done. So I've linked that uh, prompt builder video as a part of this uh, AI uh, specialist uh, certification journey because I do believe you should have some hands-on experience. So that's the basic one I covered. So before you start this uh, video or start watching this video, I would highly encourage you to watch that first uh, because I won't be explaining uh some things about the prompt i i would assume you already know what prompt builder is and what what is a prompt template and there are different kinds of prompt template you can use so please watch that first before you come and watch this one right um uh so that being said right uh, i also did something very funny today uh, the reason why i say funny um so i've used ai to generate an ai podcast so you might have seen it if you have subscribed to my channel. If you haven't, usually I don't say this, right? I think you would have never heard me saying, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, you know, you will get lots of value out of it, right? I barely say that, right? Today I'm saying it. <laughs> the reason why I'm saying it, right? Um, because if you don't, you might miss, you know, sometimes I do some cool stuff. Um, so like, for instance, I did this, uh, I uploaded this YouTube video. Uh, so this YouTube video is, is created uh, fully um, using AI. So like like I'll play a bit, right? Right. So as you can hear, uh, there are two people speaking, right? A, a guy, a male and female voice. Uh, now, obviously, this is not a real human voice. It's AI generated. So... I thought, let me see how it looks like, right? When you use AI to do a podcast. Um, so I did uh, create a, so I, I fed the content, right? The content, uh, I took it from a trailhead uh, the exam guide and put it to the uh, to the prompt and it generated a uh, podcast for me. And so it talks about why you should be doing the AI specialist certification, the things it covers. So I would say it's a pretty good, uh, thing to listen to if you're interested and if you're interested to take the AI cert, right? So sorry, I digress. So let's back, get back to the topic. So prompt journey, right? So that's exactly what I'm going to talk uh, today about the prompt journey. So obviously it's a, it forms a big part of a trust layer and you would know by, by now what LLM is, the large language model, right? So where your model is trained using large data set. That's in simple terms, right? Now, how does your prompt builder so how does your prompt uh, get utilized by trust layer? That's exactly what we're going to look at it, okay? So uh, what happens uh, from a Salesforce perspective, right? So they have given you such a beautiful uh, diagram. Uh, that's the trust layer. So you have prompt template, uh, secure data retrieval, dynamic grounding, data masking, and prompt defense. We're going to look at it, right, using an example. And, and Trailhead has a pretty good example. That's why I don't usually use slide. Um, so... Prompts, right? Prompts are pretty simple, right? It's like you have a chat GPT. You might have seen chat GPT, right? In chat GPT, uh, you can build your own prompt. Like you can build your own uh, GPT, right? So that's use a prompt engineering. So similar concept Salesforce has adopted uh, where you can use prompts to drive a business use case. Could be uh, generating an automated email or could be doing a self, uh, sorry, sales forecasting you could do that as well you could do a lot of other stuff right uh, now in prompts right before so the the reason why the trust layer is very important in this case because you are retrieving a data from a salesforce and you're using that data to train your llm so whatever data you're training you have to make sure you are actually supplying your llm with the right data right the right data means with the right security, right permission, it should not be, uh, let's say, if I wanted to see a data of Vikas Cohen, right, that's my data. I should not be, if you're a rep, 
right? If you want to see a data about Vikas Kohan, you shouldn't be should not be seeing anything that today to do with let's say Vikas, uh, let's say Muller, right? Or let's say um, uh, whatever, right? Let's say David uh, Peterson. Uh, yeah, I'm just making this up, right? So or Ben Shapiro. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a bit. You know, controversial figure, but let's say it shouldn't be bringing up that info, right? So if you know what I'm trying to say, so it should give you, it should respect the right privileges and right security. So let's do the case, right? So I could walk you through this example, which you have a Jessica. So so what the Jessica is doing, right? Uh, so she's a, let's say, sales rep and she wanted to, uh, you know, sorry, she's an agent. Okay, uh, sorry, my bad, not a sales rep. She's an agent who is helping customer with, say, some credit card uh, information. So her company has recently uh, implemented something called Service Reply, which uses autom- uh, AI capability to generate automated reply. So or you can say uh, replies suggested by artificial intelligence. So let's say she's talking to uh, one of her customer and she wants to help the customer to upgrade uh, his credit card. And now she started using the service supply and the service supply uh, trying to, to start suggesting replies in the service console, right? So obviously that reply is driven by the prompt and, and obviously the reply is also a fresh each time when you send the message to a customer, right? So that's obviously make it sense. Now, so what happened behind the scene, right? So a prompt template is created. So that's why I said, please watch the prompt builder before you come uh, and watch this because you might get confused if you have no idea what I'm talking about. So you go to prompt builder and you create a prompt template and that prompt template you give away, you, you write down a useful description of what exactly you want to achieve. Let's say in this case, framing up an email, right? You are an agent at X, Y, Z. Your client is this, 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 and you are trying to achieve this X, Y, Z, right? Uh, now, just pay attention to one thing. You might have seen all this, you know, mail merged variables, right? That will get mail merged during the time of retrieving the data using this prompt template, yeah? So this relies a lot on Mail merge component uh, relies lots on the good description. So it's very important when you write a template, when you so when you create a um, when you create a prompt, your description should be absolutely spot on, right? Because it's very important you uh, put down the relevant and necessary information. You cannot say, "Hey, uh, just write an email," blah blah blah. That doesn't work, right? A good uh, because your LLM to work uh, in a very efficient way, you need to have a very good description, right? So that's why descriptions are very important. You might have heard, you might have seen Salesforce uh, engineers when they do podcasts, right? Or when they're doing a demonstration, let's say you might have seen a Dreamforce. I haven't been to Dreamforce this year. I attended instead uh, PyTorch San Francisco uh, Masonic Center is in the same city. Um, so, I have watched some of the presentations they have done. So you might have heard, right? They would have said, uh, it's very important, right? You write a meaningful description. So that's why descriptions are very important. That leads to my second topic, which is dynamic grounding. So dynamic grounding, you know, obviously there is an expectation from a customer that you need a very high quality response based on, you know, the input you provide. So, Now, when I said the input you provide, you need to make sure you provide high quality input data. So what that means, your description, especially in this case, becomes extremely important. So in Jessica's case, who is our customer uh, agent, um, when a Jessica customer, her customer enters information, your service reply links the conversation to the prompt template. Because let's say if I say I wanted to do this, this the prompt template get activated, and it started replacing the uh, the template with the placeholder, right? And and it's also 
So this is uh, in general called the dynamic rounding, right? So dynamic rounding is, you know, extracting the information and making sure that your data is accurate. So the more grounded your prompt is, the more accurate the response will be. So dynamic ground is very important. It makes the prompt template reusable, right? So that's in simple terms, right? It, you, because drowning, dynamic grounding helps you retrieve high quality response based on the input you supply. Yeah. So now one thing they mentioned here that when you talk about the dynamic grounding, right? So obviously the data retrieval is very important, which I've already mentioned, right? A few minutes ago, that is very important that your, um, uh, the, the process which obeys the dynamic grounding should follow the secure data retrieval process. Uh, which means that you should only be retrieving the data which is relevant to, to the query. In this case, the Jessica customer. Let's say, like I said, if if she's looking, uh, she if she wants information about, let's say, Vikas Cohen, so Mr. Cohen information should only be returned instead of, you know, like I said, Vikas uh, who are right, so or whatever. So and. That's why you know the Salesforce claims that they follow all the respective authorization uh, mode, and to make sure that only the relevant person has authority to view the right information. So that's now okay. So that's I hope that's clear, right? From a dynamic grounding perspective, right? Okay. Now this is something I want to talk about: semantic uh, retrieval. Uh, so, which is not yet generally available. So, um, now, obviously, you know, using the above process, right? You, Jessica, did manage to get information, let's say, about Vikas Cohen, but it's not really helping her to, uh, to solve the problem, you know, which Mr. Cohen has asked, right? Now, for that, Jessica needs some information from the, the knowledge article and from other places, right? Now, she has a choice. She can go and look for it, which is not really effective, right? Because you're in the middle of conversation. And let's say I'm not a very easy customer. Sometimes I get very impatient because I've been waiting on a call for freaking, you know, how many hours? Sorry, not how many hours, how many minutes? So I want my issue to be resolved ASAP, right? And obviously, Jessica is a little bit anxious. So that's where the semantic ret retrieval process will be handy. So instead of Jessica going and looking at data, you know, for six, seven places, right? Uh, so what happens is that uh, your sem semantic retrieval uses an ML, machine learning algorithm, uh, to find relevant information uh, from a different data source that can be included in the prompt, right? So it uses ML, machine learning capability behind the scene. That's why I told you guys, please, if you're interested, go and learn at least an overview about different machine learning algorithms. You don't really need to know maths. Because my biggest concern, right, it's not criticism to anybody, right? Please don't think I'm criticizing you or criticizing anybody. It's a common trend in different space. You take an example of Oracle. Uh, you take an example of, uh, you know, other low-code low code code tool platform take an example of azure people expect they can become an ml or ai guy without understanding the underlying algorithm that's not going to happen that's it is a very common sense right you need if you really wanted to become an ai engineer if you're interested i would highly encourage at least an overview overview in the sense what an unsupervised algorithm is? What is a supervised algorithm is, right? What is a reinforcement learning? Now you're talking about agents, right? Agents learning from an environment. That's a reinforcement learning. So at least, you know, if someone, you know, if, if someone tells you reinforcement, at least you know what you're talking about, right? And you don't really need to know the, you know, linear algebra or linear reg regression, logistic regression or different like, um, you know, sigmoid functions, ReLU functions, you don't really need to know that, right? At least from an overview perspective. But if you're an engineer, if you're interested, yeah, sure. You can learn the maths behind it. You know, Python has a lot of uh, out-of-box library. You know, if you go to, you just, you can practice it online. You go to kegel.com, you got a, a online notebook. You can get access to a one uh, GPU where you can try, you know, you can try NumPy, you can try Scikit, you can, 
um, try Matplot. You can, you know, use PyTorch. You know, you can even build your LLM. So there are lots of things you can do, and it's free. So all you need is your time, right? That's the only thing that's going to cost you, your time. So if you're interested, I will highly encourage, right? At least start with a basic overview. Uh, you can also use ChatGPT to learn, right? So just say, give me a few ML algorithms. Give me an overview in a simple English. They will explain to you. Go to, I wanted to learn uh, neural network. Uh, what is a back propagation? Um, you know, you can learn about uh, different um, convoluted uh, CNN, uh, you know, RNN. Um, and you can also learn different algorithms. You can you can pretty much ask ChatGPT to explain it in a very simple way. Or if you want, you can uh, you know go and read online. There are different tutorials out there, right? It's pretty good. You know, as you can see, I'm very excited, right? We are living in a, such a brilliant and such a amazing time, right? I wish when I first went to MIT, they had a our GPUs were much stronger, right? I had lots of ideas, right? I was young blood. I was, I was a young lad. I wanted to build this. I wanted to build that. I did build compiler, right? Yeah, I compiled back in the days. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm still very excited, right? I mean, so I still do. But sorry, I'm, I'm, I digress. As you can see, I'm extremely excited with AI. Okay, so data masking, right? Data masking is very mask your data, right? So it's very important, right? Whatever data you're getting, right? Before you, they send it to LLM to train the Salesforce mask the data, right? For instance, they have spe special algorithms. They use that to mask the data, right? Because it's very important that you should not be storing personal information uh, or should not be passing the personal information hosted data to LLM so that they can, you know, use to train. If you pass a credit card information of somebody to LLM, LLM probably will learn it and will query it back, right? Which is not good. So data masking is very important. So as you can see that Salesforce uses it, yeah? And they use a special algorithms to use it, and it's very important. Then you have uh, prompt defense, right? Prompt defense is to protect, um, uh, it's a set of guardrails, you can say, right? It's used to protect Jessica and her customer, right? Uh, because if, let's say if you're instructed to do something, if you give instruction to LLM to to say generate a harmful content, prompt, prompt defense will make sure that you're not getting any response back, right? Because the hackers can exploit it. So that's something we call as a prompt injection. And so prompt defense is a way to prevent the prompt uh, injection, right? To make sure that user data is not exploited. That's why it's very important. So that's in a nutshell I wanted to talk about. You can also take another example. You can talk about, uh, said David wants to um, uh, in, get involved in the you know sales forecasting. So they implemented the forecasting uh, side of things and the, how they use prompts to uh, generate you know sales and other metrics. Um, and yeah, so and semantic retrieval, whether David wants to, you know, where they can use a different data set from a different uh, source to get the relevant information rather than David going and looking for it. Yeah, so you can use a different use case for whichever way that works for you, right? But the core foundation will remain the same, right? These are the things that's included as a part of uh, Einstein Trust Layer. And it's, as you can see, it's such a powerful layer which helps customer data, uh, no, which helps customer uh, in a way because it gives them a sanity check to ensure that you, their data is secure. So that's pretty much I wanted to cover in uh, today's episode. I hope you guys have an amazing Friday. Adios.